the Superman of science, and he loves to play with fire. And the things he'll do, you can do, if you so desire, to try this at home with Mr. T. Hello, and welcome back to Do Try This at Home. This is the show that takes ordinary household items like I've got in front of me right here and turns them into something extraordinary. I'm your host, Mr. G, and today's experiment is truly extraordinary. I was shown this by an old friend of mine who works high up in the scientific community. He showed me a way to actually do something that just totally blew my mind. What you're going to need to get started, and I'm not even going to tell you what this is quite yet, not until I show you all of the ingredients. I'll leave you guessing. What you need to get started is you're going to need some baking soda. You're going to need an ordinary remote control for any, about any type of AV equipment. Pretty much any remote will work. You're going to need some toothpaste. The toothpaste has to say whitening somewhere on the label. It has to be a whitening toothpaste. You're going to need a paintbrush. Mine's a foam brush, or you can use just a fiber like a camel hair brush or any type of paintbrush will work. You're going to need a couple of measuring spoons, a one tablespoon and a one teaspoon measuring spoon. You're going to also need a microwave safe bowl, some ordinary tap water, and, ah, this is very important, a pair of cheap sunglasses, like these. They don't have to be good sunglasses, just any old cheap sunglasses. In fact, it's preferable if they're cheap old sunglasses, not something that you, because this experiment may kind of cause them a little bit of harm if there's some real expensive sunglasses, so don't use your best ones. Um, the other thing that we're also going to need is we're going to need some form of a digital camera. The digital camera that I'm going to use is built into my iPhone here, and I'm going to show you right now why we need a digital camera. If you saw one of my earlier episodes of 30 Seconds with Mr. G, I showed you that you could see the LED glow on the end of a remote control through a digital camera. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over there and I'm going to show you that I've selected a key on my remote control that glows almost a solid glow when I press it. I'm pressing the, the TV volume up key. Now, you don't want a key that just blinks real quickly or pulses real fast. You want a key that kind of gives you more of a solid light like that. You see the light lighting on the end of that remote there through the camera? This is going to be our light source. Our light source for what, you might ask? Well, that's our light source for the experiment that we're about to do, which is night vision goggles, or night vision glasses. Now, this experiment is mind-boggling. Oh, there goes one of my puppies in the hallway there. This experiment just totally blew me away when I saw it done. And it's very, very easy to do. Here's what you want to start with. You want to start out with dry ingredients. You need your one teaspoon measure. You need to take one teaspoon of baking soda, one level teaspoon of baking soda, and put it into your microwave safe bowl. The next thing that we have to do is we want to take the toothpaste. Now, you need about about one teaspoon of toothpaste. You don't need exactly a teaspoon, and I'm not gonna jam it down in here real hard. Just somewhere around a teaspoon will work, and you wanna try to get most of that off of there into your bowl initially, or else it'll stick to the spoon pretty good. Now, if it sticks, that's okay, because the next step is water, and I'm gonna stir with this spoon. So, we need two tablespoons, two level tablespoons of ordinary tap water. One, two tablespoons. Now, we're going to start to stir this mixture up. I'm close my toothpaste there. It smells kind of minty. What we're going to do with this paste is we're going to take it, and there's an important step that I haven't told you about yet. So Now, if you don't get all the toothpaste off the spoon, you need to try to get most of that off of there. You might get your fingers a little messy. Try to get most of it off. I brought along a, a napkin here to wipe my finger off. Now we're going to stir this up pretty good. If it doesn't all dissolve right away, don't worry about it. You'll have plenty of time to stir it. We're going to take this solution and we're going to move over to the microwave oven. Why, you, you're asking, you're asking, why do we need a microwave oven for this solution? Do we have to heat it? Actually, no, we're not using the microwave to heat the solution, although it will get a little bit warmer. We're only going to put this in the microwave for a total of 10 seconds. 
That's enough time to excite the chemical that is in the whitening agent in the toothpaste. So, let's move over to the microwave oven. I'll meet you there. Okay, we're over here at the microwave oven. If you've used a plastic spoon, you can just leave the spoon in the solution. We're going to place the solution into the microwave. Now, the whitening agent that is in the whitening toothpaste is a chemical known as photofluorescent fluoricium. Photofluorescent fl fluoricium, or no, not fluoricium, frolicium. Photofluorescent frolicium. Photofluorescent frolicium is a chemical that is very difficult to come by, but is in whitening toothpaste. Amazing. Let's go ahead and turn our microwave oven on for 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six. 10 seconds will be plenty of time to excite the chemical photofluorescent frolicking. Okay. Now it shouldn't be too warm in 10 seconds. It should just be maybe slightly warm. We want to make sure that every, every ingredient here is fully dissolved. Now, let's move back over to the table so I can show you the rest of the experiment. Okay, we're back at the table. My solution is stirred up very well. Make sure that it's dissolved well. The next step is to take your sunglasses and your paintbrush and apply the solution to the front of the sunglasses until it coats them well. You want to get the entire front of the lenses. It may not like, look like it's doing much, it's sort of a milky solution, but it, it will actually cause that chemical to bond to the sunglass lenses. Now, you're going to set those aside and you're going to allow them to dry. Those need to dry for probably an hour or more, and I'm not going to make you wait for mine to dry. Through the magic of video, I am going to allow my glasses to dry, and then I'm going to actually show you exactly how well they work. We're gonna go down my basement where I don't have any other windows, actually no windows in my basement, where I can have pitch darkness. I'm gonna take the sunglasses, once they're dry, oops, they're starting to drip, and I'm gonna place them in front of the video camera. I will then depress this button on the remote control that will allow it this to act as sort of a spotlight, an infrared light that isn't visible to the human eye, but it will illuminate and you'll be able to actually see through the night vision glasses that you've treated with this solution. So, let me let these dry. Let's all go downstairs for a little bit of fun with our new night vision glasses. Okay, I'm down my basement and it's completely dark. I've got the sunglasses in front of the lens. Now, I'm pointing it toward my drum set. Let me press the button on the remote control and show you exactly what happens. Okay, I've pressed the button. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? You can actually see, and you can see I'm moving the glasses around in front of here a little bit, but look at that. Depending on where I have that on the glasses too, you can actually see the drum set. So from pitch blackness to now being able to actually see the drum set. Now, I'm going to try to prop these glasses on here and I will walk over there and actually, let me try this here. Sorry, it's making a lot of noise on the camera, I'm sure, and everything, but let me try to prop these glasses on here. Hold on, I'm gonna pause this a second and I'll be back with the glasses in front of it. Okay, I've got this glasses directly propped in front of the camera lens. Without, and I've also got the remote control sitting over here on a little stool with the button depressed by a, it's a heavy weight that I've got. Without those two devices working together, the glasses that we've painted and the remote control that's sending out infrared light that our normal eyes can't see, you can actually see me. See? Here I am, Mr. G, in front of my night vision glasses in front of my camera. Well, I hope that you all had fun with this. I know it's just amazing and it does work and you can carry that remote control around outside at night in the dark and you can see in, in complete pitch darkness. I assure you, my basement right now is pitch dark except for a little blue light that's on over here on my computer. So I hope you have fun with your night vision glasses. We'll see you next time on Do Try This at Home.
I almost forgot, if you're having trouble with these night vision glasses, having trouble making them work properly, I've placed some troubleshooting tips on the internet. They can be found at www.mrgme.com front slash C, like you see. Again, that's www.mrgme.com front slash S E E. Head there if you're having problems. There are some great troubleshooting tips, and I've also listed toothpastes that work very well with this experiment. I told you I'd be right back. You're also going to need a. Let's try this all over. And the chemical that is found in these whitening toothpastes is called photofluorescent. Gosh, now I forgot the name of it. Hold on, I'll think of it. Let me keep stirring here. There, that's pretty good. Mine stirred up pretty good. It's called photofluorescent. Um, something or other. Still stirring here. Anyways. If you have any trouble 